Welcome everybody. <clears throat> Today's video is called uh, Abortion. Who's to blame? <clears throat> Praise be to God. <clears throat> he poured in the oil and the wine, <clears throat> the kind that restored my soul. He saw me bleeding and dying on the Jericho road and he poured in the oil and the wine. You know, talking about bleeding and dying. It's a topic concerning abortion. It's all about bleeding and dying. But is, is this message meant to condemn? No, it is not. Uh, it's like the song said, He saw me bleeding and dying on the Jericho Road and he poured in the oil and <clears throat> the wine. And that's what the scripture is, the Bible is. It's the oil and the wine that, that, that directs us where to go. The Bible said, Thy law is a lamp unto my feet. Praise be to God. And that's how comforting the Holy Spirit of God is. Amen. As Jesus says, He shall send the Comforter, Amen, that shall prove, reprove the world <coughs> of um, sin, <coughs> righteousness, uh, and uh, judgment. So we're going to be looking at today the abortion laws and who's to blame. Praise be to God. Now, there's been a new law, I think um, it's just been. Um, come up in America, whereby that you can terminate a baby <clears throat> um, up to one hour before the birth. Amen. Originally, it wanted to be an hour after the birth, but they managed to um, go for one hour just before the birth, and it's caused them um, some outcry in America and so the Holy Spirit was showing me who is to blame for such laws uh, being passed and we have examples today of laws like uh, um, uh, gay marriage allowed in the church uh, that's something again um, that was passed uh, in America you had the Lord's Prayer which was banned from being spoken in schools uh, um, huge laws what well, I mean, laws that had been there for hundreds of years for, to, to, to be able to pray freely in school and to teach the Lord's Prayer and um, um, to, only for marriage to be allowed between male and female. These are laws like the laws of nature that has been there with us for hundreds and hundreds of years, uh, but all of a sudden they have been changed. So who's to blame? He prays to God. Who would God on Judgment Day be looking at first? And remember, the Bible says judgment begins first at the house of God, which means you and me. We must first see the judgment first in ourselves. Praise be to God. The Apostle Paul said, They that judge themselves shall not be condemned with the world. Praise be to God. Now, if you look in the scripture, Daniel 7, when it talks about the Antichrist coming, it says that when he comes, he should change laws and seasons. Now, why would it put seasons? Seasons are things like autumn, winter, summer, and spring. Things that should not be changed. Things that actually would, you would think would be impossible to change when he comes then the unthinkable will be changed. Just like when it's winter time, then it'll be summer. When it's autumn time, then it will be spring. Amen. And that's what the spirit of the Antichrist will do. And that's why you see these laws now uh, becoming to um, being changed uh, because the Antichrist uh, is, as my videos say, is all ready here like John the Baptist he said he was the messenger went to prepare the way of the Lord Isaiah 40 verse 3 says make straight the paths of our God and so to the Antichrist when he comes which is here which I've shared with you he will have his messengers that come to prepare the way for him which is not make straight the paths it is make crooked the paths so when the Antichrist is here Seasons that have been there forever will now be made from straight to crooked, making the path crooked 
preparing the way for him to come. Praise be to God. So what part does the church play inside of it? Remember, Jesus says, we are the salt of the earth. That's you and me. And when he taught that, it was from Matthew chapter 5 and 6, when he was speaking the Beatitudes. Remember the Beatitude, blessed are those who are poor, for such is the kingdom of heaven. That means happy. Happy are those, amen, who hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. All these Beatitudes are the salt of the church, me and you. If we don't think we're happy when we're poor, amen, then we lack salt. If we don't think we're happy when we hunger and thirst, then we lack salt. And we don't think we're, we're happy when we're persecuted, when men revile us and say all men of evil against us, then we lack salt. And that is the salt that we must have in ourselves. But if we lack it, which we do, the church, we lack it. Then what happens is that the salt loses its Savor. What did Jesus say? If the salt has lost its savor, it is no longer fit except to be trodden under the foot of man. That's what's happening. Because the church has lost its saltness. Amen. You don't see the churches rejoicing today. Praise God. We have no money. Hallelujah. We're hungry. For we shall be filled. Amen. That lacks today. And because of that, therefore, we're not fit but to be trodden under the foot of man. What that means is that the laws will be changed now, easily, will be trodden, the things that were good will be trodden underfoot, like Jesus says, cast not your pelt before swine, lest they turn and rend you, and that's what's happening now, because of our lack of salt, these laws now are being trodden under the foot of man, praise be to God, that's why Jesus says, ye are the light of the world, no one has a light, hides it under a bushel. So let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify God. Which is them. if our lights truly shone like it should, men would see our good works and they would. Men, not believing men, just men, would see our good works, so it means unbelievers, and they would glorify your Father which was in heaven. Means the laws would not be able to, to be changed, but because the salt has lost its savor and a light is now hid under the bushel, amen, uh, these laws and seasons now are being changed as it prepares the way for the Antichrist, praise be to God. And uh, this is why when you have um, um, Jesus, when he was being tested, tempted by the devil, the devil took him to a high pinnacle of the temple. Why the temple? Because he has an authority inside of the temple. Why? Because he knew that he had taken away the salt that was inside the people of God, which gave him the authority to enter into the tabernacle. Remember, the temple, sorry, like Jesus and the book of Job, sorry, it says, there was a day that the sons of God to present themselves to God, and Satan came in amongst them. He's able to do it because we lack salt. And if the salt has lost its favor, then the devil can come in now to begin to trample on us, which Daniel says, Satan shall trample upon the residue. Daniel 8 verse 24, it says, He will destroy the mighty and the holy people, what does that mean? He'll begin to eradicate holiness from the land. And uh, Daniel 11 verse 3, he will rule and do as he pleases. And see now, you see the path now is being prepared for him because the laws now are being passed to do whatever wickedness pleases. And so we have a law now whereby children can be killed one hour before, amen, they are born. Oh my gosh, so terrible, praise be to God. Really, really terrible. Now, what are the reasons, uh, amen, that, that, that the Satan has been able to take the salt from us? What do we lack? Uh, what's the thing that we lack most? Uh, zeal, 
Jesus said to the church, be zealous, therefore, and repent. Revelation chapter 3. Now, in Numbers 16, verse 15 to 16, Moses was with the people of God. And they're seeing all the great miracles um, and that God has done for them. And then it says, Korak rises against and turned all of Israel against Moses. In fact, it says he gathered them against Moses, all of Israel. How could Korak done that? You know what zeal it takes inside of a man to gather the whole of Israel against Moses after all that Moses had done for them. It was easy for one man to gather everybody against Moses. Uh, why? Because the people of God were not zealous uh, for God after all that God had done for them. Uh, their light was hidden under a bushel. The Korak was able now to gather all the people against Moses. And that's what's happening today. Amen. The wicked are gathering all the land against the holy commands of God, just like it would be Moses, because the people of God are not zealous, amen, for all that God has done for him. Like David said, let thy praise be continually in my mouth. Jeremiah 16 said, amen, for thy, I couldn't be quiet because thy fire was shut up in my bones, amen. So here we have the rising of Korak. It's coming today, amen, because we have it as the people of God got the zeal, amen, to fight against those that gather. And that's what happened is gathering. People are meeting together to agree on these things, on these change of laws. And in the gathering, amen, it is, it is, it is pushing back uh, the holy laws uh, that have been established for thousands of years of years. Uh, then you have 2 Kings chapter 10 uh, verse 16. Jehu, a man, uh, a king of Israel, um, he said to the people of God, come and see my zeal for God. Maybe that's lacking today. Amen. That we get up in the morning and we're telling people, come and see my zeal for God. I was going to shut the window. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. Do you each day get up and you tell people, come and see my zeal for God. Amen. So people saw that it was Jehu because he roared furiously. Amen. As he was um, seeking to obey all that God had uh, told them. Now 2 Kings 10 verses 30 um, to 31. Something strange God promised um, Jehu. Because you have zealously obeyed my words, I will make you and your descendants to the fourth generation sit upon the throne, listen to this, of God. Amen. So when you serve God with zeal, you and your children will remain, amen, ruling as kings in the land for four generations. But why not five generations? Why only four? Because it said that Joab, amen, didn't, with a full heart like David, seek to serve God. He held back. So his zeal, as zealous as it was, there was a flaw in it, amen, which cut his reign short after four generations. That's what's happened to the church today. You can have the Salvation Army. It did great for four generations. The Methodist Church did great for four generations. Pentecostal movement did great for four generations, but then it starts to wane. Why? Because like Jehu, their whole hearts are truly not given to God. And if all of our hearts don't get given to God, like unto David, what happens is we don't reign in the land after four generations. And that's what's happening. Where before, if you look in Wesley's time, or in or, or, or just a hundred years after um, Wesley's time or Booth's time, Charles Booth, the Salvation Army. Um, there's no way these laws could get passed. Why? Because these churches were reigning like kings in the land. They tried to, amen, come in and change laws like that. They would be uproar in society. Can you imagine in the Salvation Army's time with William Booth and John Wesley, they tried to pass a law that men could marry men in the church. 
They could never do that. Why? Because they were reigning as kings. They had salt inside of them that it would be impossible amen, to do that. But as the four generations have passed, no longer does the Salvation Army rule as kings. No longer does Charles Booth reign as kings. No longer does the Baptist reign as kings. The churches are stopped reigning like kings, like Jehu. And no longer sitting upon the throne of their father, David. And then the enemy is able to come in and to change the laws because these denominations, churches, Salvation Army, Methodists, Baptists uh, are no longer sitting as kings upon the throne like Jehu. Why? It's God said to Jehu. Remember 1 Kings, sorry, 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 30, 31. Because you in your heart didn't give your all to God like uh, David. So you may be zealous, but somewhere you're holding back. But later on, you'll see the salt has lost its savor. Amen. And no longer will the church, Habba rule as kings in the land. And that's what happened now. The church is no longer rule as kings uh, inside the land praise be to God and this is why God spoke about Mary and saying the, the angel Gabriel said to Mary a sword shall pierce thy side but the thoughts of many be revealed what does that mean that God measures your love by Mary's he saw in Mary a heart so much love that even when she saw Jesus being killed and tortured she said nothing she just kept quiet, kept dignified. God saw the integrity of Mary and the love that she had for Jesus as the sword pierced her side. That when people now say, I love you, God knows how much you love because he measures uh, those thoughts you have with the love that Mary had. That a sword shall pierce your side, Mary, that the thoughts of Mary will be revealed. Mary Magdalene. Jesus says, whatever the gospel is preached, this that she has done, the soul she had, shall be preached as a memorial of her wherever the gospel is preached. You think you're giving God your best, like Jehu. God measures your best with Mary's. Okay? The Holy Spirit will do that and try to convict you, amen, that you might, as John said, Jesus said to John, come up higher, come up higher. Do better, as Paul said. This one I have not yet apprehended, but I strive towards the high calling that is inside of Christ Jesus. Uh, so those people, Mary Magdalene, King David, were set as measuring rulers for us to measure ourselves against, that we don't get deceived and think by our zeal that we're greater than what we are, because we'll end up like Jehu, no longer reigning as kings in the land. That's what's happening. This is why the book of Daniel, when it talks about the Antichrist, it says he comes with his ten kings. Amen. Men will be full of his zeal. It said that they give him their authority and their power, meaning they give him their all. They truly believe they're zealous for what the Antichrist is bringing. And so he comes with his ten kings to rule over the church that no longer sits upon the throne. Judgment begins at the house of God. And that's why the laws, uh, amen, are getting changed. See, the buck stops here. We have to examine ourselves that we will not be condemned with the world. This is why in Leviticus chapter 10, verse 3, Aaron, the high priest, Amen. Moses' brother, the one who spoke for God to Pharaoh, when Aaron's two sons in Leviticus chapter 10 verse 3 go before the prince of God in the Holy of Holies, they light a fire that God said was strange fire. What it means is not the zeal. Amen. It looks like it's the zeal for God, but it is not. And a fire came and burnt them to a crisp. Amen. Because they offered up strange fire to God. We become, amen, not afraid of the fire we're offering up to God. We've lost that fear, amen. And in doing so, we lose uh, the zeal. We must always maintain the fear of God 
always about Kustobi, about Kapai. Amen. And that's what happened is the Aaron's sons died. And the church, the sons were able, the Aaron's sons dying means the priesthood. The priesthood is dying because it's offering up, it's living inside of strange fire, a fire, amen, that is not, uh, amen, uh, amen, the recipe needed to sit upon the throne as kings in the land, but instead we've made way for the Antichrist with uh, his ten kings that are beginning already to rule the land. That's why the Apostle Paul said in the last days, there shall be a great falling away, Praise be to God. Now, so that's the part of, of, of zeal. Now let's look at another reason, amen, today and why the laws are being changed and, and why the responsibility, amen, points toward the church with the golden calf incident uh, in Exodus and this incident in Numbers uh, chapter 15 and 16 with Korak. On both occasions, God said to Moses, step out the way, for I'm going to destroy all Am of Israel. And Moses says, why would you destroy three million just because of what 3,000 have done? That's the golden calf. There was only 3,000 with the golden calf, and God was going to destroy everybody just because of the 3,000. And then with Korak, we were just a family. God was going to destroy the whole of Israel because of Korak, where God said, shall you be angry with all the people because of one man? Why would God be going to destroy the majority just because of the minority? Why would he destroy three million just because of 3,000? Why? Because the majority should, through zeal, as kings have stopped the minority. If we could not stop 3,000 from rebelling against God, and there's three million of us. Praise be to God. Amen. It shows uh, that we've truly lost uh, the saver, salt saver. And that's why God got angry. We should be able to stop the minority. If we had the zeal, we would stop it. Uh, they would have stood up uh, with their swords and stopped the golden calf. Praise be to God. Amen. Uh, and that's uh, one of the reasons uh, why God would be angry with us as the church. Amen. Like I said before, in Charles Wesley's time or William Booth, they couldn't have passed a law in Parliament, amen, allowing the church to marry men. There would be marches galore. Millions would turn out with marches. Everybody would go and strike the buses, the tubes. There would be chaos in the land until the Parliament was forced to repent of such a law, amen, being changed in the land, but today, amen, that zeal has gone. No longer is our churches reigning as kings uh, in the land, uh, but instead the very opposite. They're far from kings. Uh, they're just like the common uh, people. And then you have um, in Numbers chapter 25, Pinnacus. Now God was angry with the people of God because they were converting with the women of Moab and uh, the plague of God, the wrath of God began to spread through the camp and was destroying thousands upon thousands. Uh, amen. Pinnacus uh, saw this and he quickly took his javelin and rammed it through the leader of the tribe of Simeon, which was Cosby. Amen. <clears throat> and, um, and killed them both uh, instantaneously because his heart was grieved. Uh, Amen. That um, people were sinning against God in that way. And that's the zeal was missing. Now God made Pinnacus a priest after Aaron, which you're not allowed to do. He's not born from the Levite tribes. But God ignored that and made him a priest uh, of Aaron. Uh, because the, Israel, the Israelites wouldn't have liked it. Because he was not coming from an Israel descent. Because his father was Jephro, which is an idolater. So they would have been suspicious because he shouldn't have killed um, and um, um, uh, the, the chief of the tribe of Simeon because he should have gone to trial and brought witnesses, which he didn't. Amen. His zeal got carried away because of, amen, what the man, what they were doing is sinning against God. And his zeal took over. And then because he killed them, God pulled back 
and stop the plague uh, against Israel. Going back to that, when the minority can stop the majority. The minority can stop the majority. Any laws in the land, gay marriage, um, uh, um, um, abortion, we as the church could have stopped the minority Bakustu a long time ago. But what happens? The Bible said a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Uh, amen. Because we've not, amen, been grieved uh, to stop it ourselves. That's what 2 Peter 2, when it talks about Lot, it said that Peter says, Lot, the righteous Lot, used to sit at the gate of Sodom every day trying to stop people coming in into the wicked city because he was grieved, amen, with the homosexuality and the greed and whatever sin it was there and trying to stop people coming in to be corrupted by the wickedness of Sodom that he did something about it every day. Now watch this, on his own. He was on his own. He had no encouragement, amen. And this is why when the angels came to Sodom, they ate the meal that Lot provided in the scripture. That only happens in one other place. The angels only ever eat two people, Abraham and Lot. Uh, praise be to God. Why? Because they had the true salt in themselves, uh, whereby they were grieved with the laws and the land that they did something about it every single day. Abraham went to war against the, amen, the kings of the land. And, uh, amen, Lot sat at the gate every day warning people, amen, not to come into Sodom. And when the angels saw that, they ate. Nobody else. Why? Because the angels didn't see enough salt to eat with the people of God. The angels don't sit and eat with you. It's because you lack the salt on your table. And it's only two men, amen, that they ever ate from. I'm trying to rush because I'm actually um, running out of time. Yes, then we have um, Ezekiel chapter 9, where God now sends uh, um, the, the, the man with the ink on to go and mark God's people. And then the angel is commanded to destroy everybody that doesn't have the mark on their head. As everybody in the church, uh, an angel begins at the house of God and begins to kill people in the house of God because the incon was only given to those, and here's what it says in Ezekiel chapter 9, those who mourn and groan of the wickedness of the land every day. When God sees you like Lord mourning and groaning over the wickedness of the land, doing something about it, arming yourself like Abraham and sitting at the gate like Lord Amen. Trying to warn people to stop their wickedness. Uh, amen. Trying to stop the laws being changed. Uh, like William Booth uh, or Charles Wesley. Then the angels came and ate with Lot uh, and uh, Abraham. And then the incorn is given only to those. Now you can go to church all you want. Uh, but if you're not mourning and groaning. Amen. Uh, about the things that are changing in this land. Uh, then the incorn will not be put upon you. They were nearly finished because they've run out of time. And one of the last examples was Joshua. Joshua um, chapter 7 verse 10. Joshua now is grieved because they're beginning to lose their battle because somebody has sinned in the camp uh, and he's on the floor crying and mourning to God. And God said to Joshua, get up off the floor and do something about it. What do you mean? Go and find the man. If you look, you'll find. If you seek, you'll find. If you knock, the door will be open. If you ask, you shall receive. Anything believing in my name, it shall be done. So what's happening to the laws today then? Well, we've become like Joshua. We're f stuck to the ground of the floor, not able to get up. Amen. Well, God's commanded Joshua, get up and do something about it. But like in Judges chapter 4, jail nailed the head of Caesarea to the floor. Amen. After he desired a glass of milk. If we stay like babies, just drinking the milk of God's word, 
Our zeal will not reach the time that we will not be able to get up off the floor. We'll be nailed to the floor. And that's what's happening today. Our minds are being nailed. That means our head. The authority that we have is being nailed to the floor. As the lands, the laws, and the seasons are now being changed. Making way for the Antichrist. And like Paul says, the great falling away has already begun. Because we've lost two things. Our salt. And we've lost our zeal. Praise be to God.